Hey, what's up everybody? Just wanted to show you some of the gallberry that's still in bloom. And you might be wondering why I'm talking about that. Well, this time of year, there's really not much left blooming before the nectar flow ends here in about two to three weeks. And as I am talking, hopefully y'all can see one of our bees on the gallberry. All right, so it is a beautiful Memorial Day weekend. It is May 24th, it's actually Sunday. I don't really talk about the weather too much anymore, but today it is 88 degrees and it feels like 96 degrees. The humidity is 66%, so I'm not too sure how long I'm gonna last out here in the bee yard. And another part of the weather I'd like to discuss is our rainfall. So for this month, to my knowledge and memory, this is the most rain we've received in one month when we have not had a hurricane move through. So again, it's the 24th and we've received 24 and a half inches of rain with nine inches coming from this past week. So why is that significant to this area and beekeeping? Well, that amount of rain can have negative effects on the nectar flow as well. It'll wash away a lot of nectar and pollen and any source that's currently blooming. But seeing the bees still working the gallberry gives me hope. All right, so enough me yapping. I'm gonna get set up over in the bee yard and we'll go through a routine inspection of hive number one. All right, over here at hive number one, as you can see, I got the smoker going, but let's try something different this time because I like changing it up. And let's take a look at the entrance before the inspection. So as you can see, if I can get my shadow out of the mm -hmm. way, quite a few bees hanging out at the entrance. You can see some of them sticking their rears up facing outward and some facing inward. And if you don't know, that's how they generate some airflow to keep the hive at a constant, I believe it's in the 90s, maybe 93 or 95 degrees. All right. Just sharing some info. Let's give them some smoke. That's what I'd like to see, and I'll show you real quick. I'll give you all a peek into the super, but this is what I like to see for sure. And if you look back at previous videos, you'll understand why I'm excited. Because early in this year, this hive was struggling. I didn't think they were going to do that well. So, seeing that many bees, which it's not a lot, but seeing bees up in the honey super is a good sign. All right, let's take a peek and see what they've been up to. So if you look back at last week's video, I've removed a super from hive number two, where I moved frames around to give hive number one more drawn frames, since the bees of this colony seem to be working the super a lot better than the other. So as you can see, the center frames were the original, but the ones that I added are more so on the outside here. But they are finally really starting to work the super here so one of my concerns with the amount of weather that we got this past week is you know the bees can't make it out of the hive and they need a food source so if you don't know this or not they'll start eating their uh their honey supply and that's got some weight to it about time all right awesome it is amazing how quickly bees will uh, start filling out a super. That's for sure. So I'm finally gonna switch out this plastic excluder with a metal one. Again, in all the previous videos, if you look back, 
and that went pretty well. Usually, when I remove the excluder, it pops up and really jars the bees around. I was just checking for the queen on the bottom side of the excluder, which I've never found her there or on the inner lid, but you know, as folks say, never say never. Hopefully you can see this. Let me angle the camera down some more. There we go. That should be a little better. Okay. All right, let's get to it. Actually, let me get my queen clip. I'm a... Uh, I feel like I'm not that organized today. And I am sweating already. All right, frame number one, like usual. Nice food store. Camera usually doesn't pick up on that, but a ton of uh, stored nectar, and they're capping that into honey, which is typical, like I was saying, for the first frame, or the outside frames, really. give myself some space to work and also to make the inspection go a little quicker so I don't have to go back and forth with my hive tool. I'll pry the first few frames loose so then I can just remove them. This frame has some weight to it and that's nice too. A lot of food. Really wish they would move that up into the super. If they did, they'd probably fill it out in no time. But yeah, a lot of a lot of nectar. Beautiful capped honey. Let's get that out of the way as well. You always want to give yourself some give yourself uh, some space to work. All right. Another nice food frame, so that's about three deeps. And some brood here. This is frame three again. Ooh. <laughs> Alright, look at that. Right in the center. Look at that queen cell. That is capped. I was out here a week ago as well. And that's probably on the verge of hatching. So. That's frame three. So at this point, I need to find the queen. I'll cage her just so I know where she is if I can. But mainly, I need to find the queen to make sure they still have one. And if they do, it's kind of a tough decision at that point because I don't like destroying queen cells. But at the same time, if they have a queen and they're queen right, queen cell might get torn down. Let me check for some eggs as well as we move through the colony looking for the queen. There's eggs, if the camera can see where the light's at. There's eggs right here. Well, that's kind of the weird thing is I found, I just saw one or two, but not, not a whole lot. All right, this side has a whole bunch more pupated larva, but still, still want to find eggs. All right, let's check the next frame for both be queen and eggs, of course. So 
see what is this four frame five right in the middle right. always looking for the queen more so this time around again because of that capped queen cell that will most likely hatch this week. I would put money on that. All right, there's eggs. There's eggs all throughout here. So typically where you would expect to find them. All right, so I don't need the flashlight any longer. After finding eggs, it now becomes a mission to find the queen. Not to be too repetitive, but this time of year when you find a cell like that, a queen cell, you have to find the queen. And sometimes, sometimes it takes longer than you want. So frame six. And I was just thinking, maybe uh, maybe they develop that queen cell because they need more room, even though they have a super on that they're working. It might not be a bad idea to add another super to them, just to give them more space. Yeah, I mean, she's doing a nice job. I'd hate for this colony to swarm. Or maybe they've already swarmed considering how far along that queen cell is. Hmm. Got two more frames to go. If I don't find her with this first pass, I'll probably, yeah, I mean, I'll have to. I'll have to go back through and double check all the frames. I'll do that off camera to spare y'all that boring part. All right, two more frames. Yeah, she started she started to lay here. Looks like they've been they've been moving food around. A lot of pollen in the center. Looks like they've been moving it around to give her space. I usually find the queen when I don't really need to, meaning there's no swarm cells or supersedural cells. And then when I need to find her, 
it's usually uh, kind of like this, a little difficult. Alright, one more frame. That's heavy. The drones are throwing me off because my eyes immediately attract it to the, the larger bee on the frame. And it's a drone each time. I found the queen on outside frames before, but more commonly you'll find her where the brood is at because she's constantly looking for an open cell to lay in. But don't dismiss the outside frames just for the simple fact that she can be anywhere. Okay, here we go. I'm going to turn the camera off for a little bit, but I'm going to need to go back through the hive because I really need to find her after finding that very developed queen cell, I believe, on frame number three. So sometimes this takes the better part of a half hour, depending how difficult she wants to be. But I'll come back here in a little bit after I move through the hive again. All right, here's the deal. I have not found the queen. So, what I'm going to do this time, or for now at least, I'm going to box them back up. I've done this before and it worked. I'm going to box them back up, give them some time to settle down. Inspect another hive in the meantime. And by the time I'm done with another hive, I'll come back and have to go through the entire hive, number one, all the frames, to find the queen, only because frame number three has a fully developed queen cell that will hatch this week. So unfortunately, I can't put them back together and say I'll check on them next week, because if I, if I were to do that, most likely they will swarm in the, in the next few days. So that's it for now. I'll come back maybe 20 minutes or so and reinspect hive number one in efforts to find the queen, making the assumption they have the queen still because there's a few frames that have day old eggs. So I'll be back in a little bit. In the meantime, I'm going to inspect another hive, see how they're doing. And then hopefully when I come back, like I said, it worked before for a previous hive. Hopefully when I come back to reinspect number one, I can find the queen and then if I find the queen I can tear down that queen cell or I can make a split kind of undecided at this point but we'll see what happens all right so back to number one this is the reinspect because I could not find the queen the first time around and the third frame has a very healthy queen cell so, I really need to find the queen in this colony so I can destroy the queen cell or make a, tra or make a transfer it, and make a split. I'm really undecided at this point what I want to do, but the first step is to find the queen. But yeah, that's the reason I'm reinspecting this colony. You can see that queen cell. I mean, it is fully developed. I'm really hoping they did not swarm already. All right, back again. 
And the reason I'm being so persistent with this hive, trying to find the queen, is they have such a nice population of bees. I would hate to lose them to a swarm and because they have quite a few frames like this one that has a ton of eggs in it day old eggs which makes me believe she is still here she just doesn't want to be found right now but i just want to go through it again and i'll continue to do so today until i find her Might end up boxing them up again and coming back later today. I just really want to be sure that they don't have, or they have a queen before I do anything with that queen cell. Alright, let me turn the camera off again to save you all the boring details here. I'm going to move back through them one more time and then I might end up boxing them up again. Alright, I've been at it for probably the better part of 10 minutes now and I hate to say this but my patience has got the best of me and I went to just uncap the very tip of the queen cell there hopefully that's on camera and as you can see it's still a pupated larva but I don't know what effect this will have I imagine uh, this will not be good for the queen so I am, I am doing this because I am trying to let some bit of experience tell me that they have a queen still based off of the amount of bees in the hive and based off the frames of eggs. So there's a better look at the queen cell. Here, let me grab the camera and bring it closer. I have not been able to find this queen, but like I said, based off the amount of eggs, here's a look at a very, very mature queen larva. So I still have a few frames or a few uh, hives to inspect. I'm just gonna make the call and say they are still queen right but unfortunately for fortunately for this queen cell here it's not happening this time around and the larva just fell and there is a look I'll grab the camera again but there is a look at what royal jelly looks like all that white substance that the bees make in their brain and that is what develops a regular female egg fertilized egg or unfertilized actually into a queen bee all right i've been out here for a while the heat is definitely getting to me so i'm gonna wrap this up and before i do so that is a queen larva down there. Hopefully the camera can pick up on that. That's the larva that just fell out of that queen cell. I hate doing it, I really do. Yes, I could have made a split out of that, but again, it's time of year, I'm trying to maximize the honey harvest and this hive is actually doing very well, finally. I just made the decision, like I said, to tear down that queen cell kind of in hopes that they are still queen right based off experience and a few things that I saw so boxing them up for good swapping out the plastic excluder with this metal one and I might need to get in the shade a little bit I'm starting to get overheated all right well hey thanks for watching if you're if you're still watching at this point uh definitely a more difficult inspection in comparison to the last few weeks the bees made it pretty easy 
before this time around. It's pretty difficult, but that's just how things go, I guess. All right. That's it for, for hive number one. I'm done with them for this week. Unfortunately, as you saw, I had to tear down a very mature queen cell that probably would have hatched in the next week. That would have been a fantastic split to make from it, but with the goal of having a nice honey harvest and they actually do have a pretty heavy super finally, I would hate to see this hive swarm at this time of year and take half the bees, half the honey as they say with them. And it takes about six to eight weeks for a hive to get going again after they swarmed. So there's an adage I've heard a few times now. I'll try to say it right the first time, not to confuse y'all, but it says a swarm in May. A swarm in May is worth a barrel of hay, so not much. A swarm in June is worth a silver spoon, meaning June being the prime season for the nectar flow. You definitely don't want to swarm in June. And a swarm in July, let it fly. And I'll leave you with that. <laughs> If you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you hit the bell, you'll receive notifications of uh, future videos. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Definitely a lot longer of a hive inspection than usual. And in fact, I might call it quits and come back this afternoon to finish up the rest of the bee yard because it is hot. I don't have a water source out here with me, which is obviously not a good idea, but luckily the house isn't too far away. All right, that's it. So now that I'm done with number one here, Let's take a look at the front. Kind of typical carnage, as you see. A few bees got killed hanging out on the front porch. Their sisters will uh, give them the boot, which is basically the ground here in front of the hive. Becomes a graveyard. A whole bunch of pollen that got knocked off. Some bees, assuming. More so, probably out of the frames, but they'll clean that up in no time. All right, that's it. Coles Farm, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Memorial Day weekend. It is hot and humid, and I am out of here. All right, hey, welcome back to hive number one again, folks. So the reason I'm back here for the, uh, I don't even know now, maybe third time today, is I thought about something after I boxed them back up, and that is to manipulate the frames in the honey super. So typically bees will work from the center out, so I did not, you know, watch the beginning of the video, of course, I did not remove any of the honey, the honey super frames to see how far along capped they are, but I do recall a few of the outside frames not being worked as heavily, which is very typical because they work from the, again, the center out. So given the time of year and they have a few weeks left, possibly a few weeks left of the nectar flow, I'm going to move some of the frames from the center outward and some of the frames on the outside to the center so they can work those more. So like I said, just something I thought of after I boxed them up. Yeah, so let's take a look at, let's, let's see how the center frames are doing. And this is a nine frame, I'm trying something different this year. And yeah, they're, uh, they're definitely moving in the right direction here. Let's see, let's set that aside real quick. I might, actually, I might not move any of them, really. That's got some weight to it there. They're capping that nicely. Yeah, same thing on that side. So actually, you know what? I think I'm just gonna leave them alone, really. Yeah, that's in the center, or yeah, kind of in the center. They have a ways to go on that one. All right, well, my eyes were playing tricks on me. So, just gonna put them back, get them spaced out properly, and that's it. I'm not gonna mess with them. Maybe in the upcoming weeks, but for now, they look good. Okay, well, hey, that's it for hive number one for this week. I've been in them way too much for one day, but 
as you saw beginning or earlier in the video really had a hard time finding the queen and then made a decision I usually don't like to make which is uh, to tear down a queen cell but sometimes it's a ne necessary evil if you're trying to prevent them from swarming but again you definitely want to make sure they're queen right I found enough eggs and I made the determination that they are queen right kind of a gut feeling even though I didn't find the queen and they had a very mature queen cell that was probably gonna hatch in this next week but this time of year you definitely don't want to swarm all right, that does it for number one, done for this week. Tune in next week for another routine inspection. Thanks for watching again, everybody.